Suspense. And the producer of CBS Radio's outstanding theater of thrills, the master of mystery and adventure, William N. Robeson. Some people are just too good to be true. They sacrifice their lives on the altar of service, the modest martyrs of everyday life. Their examples shine like so many bright and valiant lights in this black and naughty world. But perhaps their reward is not in heaven, but right here on earth. Perhaps they are the world's most colossal egotists who presume to think they can change venality, greed, and sloth by blind humility. They serve, they suffer, they sacrifice, and who knows, perhaps they enjoy every agonizing minute of it. Listen, listen then, as Miss Kathy Lewis stars in Everything Will Be Different, which begins in just a moment. Now, Everything Will Be Different, starring Miss Kathy Lewis. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. There's something I've got to tell you. You go ahead, Cheryl. I'm all ears, the fellow says. I haven't had a friend for such a long time. A friend to talk to, you know? Yeah. Like you. Yeah, I know. You mind if I freshen up my drink before you get started with a confession? Go ahead. <laughs> you ought to know where everything is by now. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like about you, Herb. You always bring your own bottle. Perfect gentleman. <laughs> and die of thirst if I waited for you to furnish the booze. Oh, I'd serve liquor if I could afford it. Just because I don't drink is no reason to spoil other people's fun. Well, that's what I like about you, Cheryl. You're so broad-minded. Well, live and let live, I always say. Well, what do you got to tell me? Herb, I'm... I'm not what you think I am. I was married once. <laughs> so what else is new? Don't laugh at me, Herb. All right. All right, I'll be serious. How's about a little kiss? Oh, Herb. Don't, don't go on. Ah, boy, don't everything. you think it's about time we got better acquainted? We've been seeing each other now three, four months. Three months, two weeks, and four days. You've been counting. Ever since the day you got mixed up down at the plant and came into personnel when you were looking for accounting. <laughs> Well, you have days like that. Sorry? About what? Getting mixed up down at the plant that oh. day. Oh. Are you? I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? I won't know until I tell you about my husband. Well, you're not still mad. Oh, no. No. He's dead. Well, and... Uh... Only... You see, her... They said I killed him. Now, starring Miss Kathy Lewis, act two of Everything Will Be Different. Well, did you kill your husband? I failed him. He needed me, and somehow I failed him. I don't know how. I I gave him everything, all of me. Somehow it wasn't enough. Some guys are like that, never satisfied. But this one is dead. Let's forget him. I can't. Not until I've told you all about it. Okay. Okay, hon. Let's have it. Well... We, we we sort of went together for a long time. It was a crazy kind of thing because Walter was a crazy kind of fellow. I I wouldn't hear from him for days, and then then all of, all of a sudden he'd call up at the craziest times. Hello. Hi, doll. Wally, do you know what time it is? Time to see you, baby. Nearly eleven o'clock. Crazy. Meet me down at Nino's in a half hour. Well, I, I was getting ready for bed. I've taken off my face and i Well, I've... put it back on and meet me down at Nino's. Wally, you've been drinking? Oh, I've, uh, I've had a couple. Wally. Oh, now you know me, doll. I can handle it. Nino's in a half hour, eh? All right, Wally. Crazy. 
Wally? Yeah, Dom. Don't be late. 11.30 in the back booth. I'll be there, Wally. We always sat in the back booth at Nino's. It was dark there and romantic-like. There wasn't any rock and roll on the jukebox, just pretty Italian songs. Only this night, like so many others, Walter was late. Hiya, doll. Been here long? I was just about to leave. Oh, I'm sorry. I got hung up. Hey, Nino, bourbon and ginger. Gee, Wally, I... please have some coffee. I don't want any coffee. Why, Wally? Why what? Why do you drink so much? Well, why not? Look at the kind of life I lead. A crummy job that got no future in it. A lousy furnished room to hang my hat in. Nobody to care about me. I to... care about you. You do? Do you think I'd come down here in the middle of the night to be with you if I did? Yeah, and that's another thing. We never get a chance to be alone. Always meeting on street corners or, or lousy bars. What kind of a life is that? You go back to your furnished room and I go back to mine. And we're just as lonely as if we didn't meet at all. A man ought to, ought to have a home. And a wife to come home to. And, and good hot food on the table. A man ought to have someone to take care of him. And a woman ought to have someone to take care of. Sure, sure. It, it works both ways. It's a... It, 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 it. Why don't we? Why don't we what, Wally? Get married. Why not? Because you haven't asked me. I'm asking you now. I'd marry you in a minute, Wally. Except for one thing. What? You're drinking. Oh, now, don't worry about that. Once we're married, what do I have to drink about? Will you marry me, doll? Yes, Wally, I will. <laughs> Great. Hey, Nino, make that a double, hey? I got something Wally, to celebrate. now, please. Oh, now, now don't worry, Wally. honey. Don't worry. You'll see. After we're married, everything will be different. I believed him. I think anything as important as marriage is bound to change a person, don't you? In time. Of course, Wally didn't change right away. He was even late for the wedding. When he got there, there was liquor on his breath. But after all, a man only gets married once. Of course, we didn't have the time or, or the money for a honeymoon, but after a while, Wally got a better job. We were able to buy this house. I could quit my job and work full time at the job a woman's best qualified for, making a home for her husband. That's you, darling? Uh, yeah. You're home right on time. Yeah, the fight's on in five minutes. Dinner'll be ready in a jiffy. I'll have it in here on a tray. Oh, Wally, it's such a nice dinner. Swiss steak, mashed potatoes, and salad. Can't, can't you eat at the table? You wouldn't want me to I... miss the fights, would you? No. Then like I said, I'll have my dinner in here by the TV. Okay? Okay, dear. Wally. Mm hmm? Are you asleep? I was. I can't sleep. So why should there be two of us? Wally. What? Let's go out some night. Out? Yes. Friday, say that there's, there's a good movie at the drive-in. You get good movies on TV. A little old, maybe, but good. Oh, I don't care about the movie. But but just let's let's go out. What's the matter? Don't you like your home? Yes. Oh, yes, Wally. But I'm I'm in it all day and long. And I'm out of it all day long. When I come home, I don't want to go out again. But just once in listen, a while. Listen, listen. What do you got to complain about? You got everything a woman should want, haven't you? Yes. Uh, I... The trouble with you is you haven't got enough to keep you busy. Oh, I keep busy enough. Uh, maybe what you need is a baby. That'd make things different. A baby. Yeah. Maybe things would be different if I had a baby. They sure would. Now shut up and go to sleep, will you? Did you have a baby? No, no. 
He never mentioned it again. Uh, guy must have had rocks in his head. Nice-looking guy like you. Hey, running out of ice. Oh, well, who needs ice? I'll just set the bottle down here beside me. There we are. <laughs> I'm sorry for the interruption. That's all right. So what happened next? Well, there... There was this woman lived next door. She was just about the only friend I had in the neighborhood... She used to drop in about every afternoon for a cup of coffee. She kept telling me... Honey, you don't know when you're well off. You got a good man. A good, steady provider. Don't let him get away from you. Now, what if he doesn't take you out as much as you'd like? He comes home every night, doesn't he? Yes. Not like that rat I was married to. With him, it was anything in skirts. Or capri pants. Anything but me. Well, I fixed him good. I took him for everything he's got, so what have I got? A house, an empty house, and no one to come home to it. You sound so bitter. I am. I got a right to be. I guess you have. I guess I haven't. Yeah, that's right, honey. You got it made. So play it smart. You want to go to the movies. Your husband wants to look at TV. So let him. And take in a movie by yourself every now and then. Oh, I don't I don't think he'd like that. <laughs> Won't hurt to try, will it? Well, I did try. To my surprise, Wally didn't make any objection. So I started going out to the movies by myself a couple times a week. And this arrangement wasn't the most desirable, at least it, it did get me out of the house, back into the world, even if it was a world of make-believe. One night I did what I'd never done before. I, I walked out in the middle of a show. It was, it was just too dull. And when I got home, I let myself in by the kitchen door, and the first thing I noticed, it was so quiet. The TV in the living room was turned off. First, I thought Wally had gone out, and and then I heard a voice, a woman's voice. Oh, Wally, why? Your wife will be home. <laughs> no, no, no. She oh. always sits through the second feature. Oh, well, I gotta be getting home. Oh, now, come on, one more drink, eh? One for the road? Oh, you twisted my arm. Crazy. I'll be right back, eh? <laughs> hey, what are you doing here? I live here, Wally. Remember? What's the idea of sneaking up on me like this? Your face is smeared with lipstick, Wally. Don't you want to wipe it off? I like it that way. I see. Honey, who are you talking to out there? My wife, Shirley. Shirley? Oh, I don't know, honey. I just dropped in to ask you for that recipe you told me about the other day, and your husband insisted I have a little drink with him, and so I did. Oh, I see. Well, I guess I'd better be toddling off home. That's right. You'd better. Well, good night, all. Well? Oh, stop standing there with that long, suffering holier than thou look on your kisser. Get off my back. You're drunk. Yeah, I'm drunk. And I'm going to get drunker. Give me that bottle. Yeah, sure I will. I said give it to hey, now me. Now, be careful. It's my last bottle. If only it were. Who do you think you are? Your wife, Walter. And I try to be a good wife. I try to do for you the way you want. I must be a failure. Well, what I saw here just now couldn't be. And in my house... In the home I tried to make for you. Oh, why don't you knock it off? This is the first time she's been over here. Oh? The other times you've gone over there? Is that it? Is it? What if it is? Why, Walter? Why? Why? Look in the mirror and you'll see why. Come on, look at yourself. You ain't as young as you once was. You're getting flabby and wrinkled. And you never laugh. Oh, you're a sad sack to live with, kid. A dull one. Now you take this Thelma, babe. She's a barrel of laughs. It never hurts anyone to laugh. Never hurts anyone to love his neighbor, neither. 
They tell us to love our neighbor, and that Thelma sure makes it easy. Oh, cut out the hysterics and give me that bottle. I need another drink. No! I said give it to me. No! It's my last bottle. You broke my last bottle. You... He whirled around, snatched a knife from the rack on the wall, and started for me. I still held the neck of the broken bottle in my hand. He lunged at me. I threw up my hand to protect myself, and he got the jagged bottleneck in the face. He stumbled past me and fell. Somehow he fell on the knife. He lay there on the kitchen floor, quite still. And I knew that he was dead. Miss Kathy Lewis, Act Three of Everything Will Be Different. Oh, you poor kid. I had to tell you, Herb. Oh, I'm glad you did. I'm so glad you did. I never heard a, a sad story in my whole life. No ice. We are our... Oh, yeah, that's right. We're out of ice. No, we still got booze, so who needs ice? So, uh, go on. Well, that, that's all there is to it. At first, the police thought I'd done it. Circumstantial evidence. Oh, yeah. But after they heard my story a half dozen times and checked his fingerprints on the knife handle and took pictures, all the things they do, they, they called it accidental death. But I don't know. To me, it's the same as if I had murdered him. Oh, Cheryl, honey, how can you say that? Because at that moment, I wanted to murder him. I wanted him to be dead. Yeah, but, but you didn't kill him. Didn't I? If I hadn't broken his last bottle, he wouldn't have come at me with that knife. And if I hadn't cut his face with that bottle, then, neck, he, then he'd have killed you with that knife. Maybe not. Oh, anyway, he wouldn't have stumbled and now, killed Now, now, look, look, hon. Hon, this is silly. Mm -hmm. You can't go on through the rest of your life blaming yourself. Don't you think I'm to blame? No, of course not. Now, come on, hon. How, how about that little kid? Uh -huh. oh, wait. No, wait. No, wait, <laughs> wait, Herb. <laughs> there, there's one thing that, that worries me about you. What, hon, what? Well, you're drinking. What? Oh, that? Well, all right. You can stop worrying. That's the last of the bottle. <laughs> Why do you drink so much, Herb? Well, I, I don't know. I, out of loneliness, I guess. You talk about loneliness? I got nobody either. And I... All right, I, I, I might as well say it. I've been thinking now a long time about you and me. You all alone in this house, me all alone, that little furnished room. I've been thinking, why don't we get married? Hmm? You, you mean after, even after what I just told sure, you? Sure, sure, that's all over with. That's dead and gone. How about it, I sure? Huh? <sighs> I must admit the thought has crossed my mind. <laughs> Only... Only what? I do worry about your drinking. Oh, forget it, hon. You'll see. You'll see. Once we're married, everything will be different. Suspense in which Miss Kathy Lewis starred in Everything Will Be Different, written, produced, and directed by William N. Robeson. Supporting Kathy Lewis in tonight's story were Lawrence Dobkin, Virginia Gregg, and Peter Leeds. Listen. Listen again next week, when we return with Mr. Dennis Day, starring in Like Man, Somebody Dig Me, another tale well calculated to keep you in Suspense. 